Hello and welcome to Barber Shop Book Storytime with Alvin Irby. That's me. Today we're going to read a funny and a cool and interesting story and it's called What If You Had Animal Teeth? Let's look at the front cover. What do you notice? I notice that on the cover, there is some type of snake and his fangs are sticking out like this. And they have something dripping, some liquid dripping off. And then there's a little boy who, guess what? He has the exact same type of fangs and something's dripping off of his fangs as well. Well, as you can see from the cover, there's a real snake and then there's a boy with make-believe teeth. When someone uses their imagination, those stories are sometimes called fantasy or science fiction if it combines parts of science and parts of things that are made up. And so this story has a combination of fantasy, fiction, and science. So it's like a science fiction fantasy book. Isn't that cool? Well, enough talking. Let's get into the story. What if you had animal teeth? That would be kind of weird, right? To have animal teeth. So, you've lost your front teeth. Before you know it, two new ones will push right into their space. But what if an animal's teeth grew in instead? What if animal teeth grew in instead if you lost your teeth? And look, here's a little girl who's missing her two front teeth. Let's figure out what would happen. A beaver's front teeth are shaped like chisels. Chisels, <laughs> sorry, chisels are like this metal uh, tool. And normally someone who sculptures things like a statue, they'll use a chisel and they'll use a hammer and they'll hit the chisel and it slowly carves uh, some type of material uh, to make it look like something or into a shape if you want to, you know, maybe use wood for a particular thing that you're trying to make. Let's see. A beaver's front teeth are shaped like chisels and are very sharp. They're perfect for biting off bark and cutting down trees. So beavers must have really, really, really strong and really sharp teeth if they can help cut down a whole tree. And here's a fact. That just means it's something that's true. A beaver's front teeth have a coating that contains iron. Whoa! Iron is a type of metal. That makes them super strong and orange. Do you want orange teeth? I don't think so. Let's take a look. Well, here's the beaver. And there's his teeth, and they do look a little orange. And remember, one of the reasons why beavers' teeth are so orange is because they have a coating of uh, something that contains iron, and it makes their teeth kind of orange. Well, that's a cool fact. I didn't even know that. Let's see. If you had beaver teeth, your front teeth would never stop growing. Could you imagine if your teeth never, ever, ever stopped growing if they just kept getting bigger and bigger? So you could gnaw all the tough stuff you like day after day for, for all your life. So you would never, ever have to worry about um, your teeth not growing. And look, there's a little kid with beaver teeth. Although his teeth don't look really orange and yellow. Maybe because they're new. Great white shark. 
A great white shark's front teeth are like all its others, two inches long, two inches long, that's like this long. Could you imagine if your teeth were that long? Wow. Two inches long with an edge like a steak knife. They're great for biting through super thick things like an elephant skin, uh, elephant seal's skin. So shark teeth are super duper sharp and they're long and they're perfect for biting through the tough skin of animals that live in the, in the ocean or the sea. Great white sharks get new teeth about every 100 days. That keeps their bite as, at its sharpest. So a great white shark, it gets new teeth every 100 days. And look, there's a little girl. And look, she's putting shark teeth under her pillow. It seemed like she would make a lot of money every 100 days because her teeth would fall out. If you had great white shark teeth, you'd never have to worry about losing a tooth. There'd always be a new tooth growing behind it, ready to slide into place, and there'd never be a gap in your bite. So as soon as one tooth falls out, there's another row of teeth behind it, ready to just fill the space. And if you look, you can even see from the little girl's mouth that she has rows of teeth. Do you see the, the row behind her teeth? Sorry. Um, there's a row and then there's another row of teeth right behind it. So that's kind of scary, but it's also kind of cool. For those of you who are just tuning in to Barbershop Book Storytime, today we're reading a story called, What If You Had Animal Teeth? And so this is a story that is science fiction, fantasy, and a little bit of nonfiction because it has interesting facts about animals' teeth, um, but it also tells you what it would be like if you had animal teeth. Narwhal? A, nor a narwhal's front teeth do something quite strange. The right one stays small, but the left one grows longer and longer and longer. A narwhal? Have you ever heard of an animal called a narwhal? Well, to nearly 10 feet, once it's that big, it has a new name. Instead of a tooth, it's called a tusk. Oh, cool. I didn't know that, that when a tooth gets really, really long, for some animals, they call it a tusk. I have heard of animals that have a tusk. We're going to learn more about it. Well, let's read the fact about narwhals. And remember, a fact is just something that's true. A narwhal's long front tooth grows right through its front upper lip. Oh my goodness, a narwhal has a long tooth that grows out of its front lip. Ouch. And look, here's a picture of a narwhal. It's an animal that grows in the water and it has a long, long pointy tooth that go, grows out of its lip. But remember, when it gets long, it's called a tusk. What, what would you use your tusk for if you were a narwhal? Would you poke around to find fish or fight off your enemies? Or would you feel your way through the dark parts of the ocean? Even scientists wonder what a narwhal does with its tusk. And look, here's a picture of a little kid who has a narwhal's tusk and it's poking out of his lip. And you can see what he's doing. He's fishing. He's fishing with his tusk. Have you ever been fishing before? When I was a little kid, I went fishing and it was fun. And I think I even caught some fish. Next, we have an elephant. An elephant's front teeth are called tusks. Did you know that? A male tusk grow between five and seven inches longer each year of its life. The world record uh, elephant tusk was more than 11 feet long. Wow, 11 feet 
That's really, really, really long. Um, they're great for digging water holes and pulling up tree roots to much. So if an elephant can pull up a tree root, then it must be really, really strong. Let's read the fun fact. Elephants are right tusked or left tusks, meaning they use one tusk more than the other. So some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. Which hand do you use the most? Are you right-handed? Hello. Or are you left-handed? Whichever hand you use the most, that decides whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And it's the same thing with elephants. Some of them maybe use their right tusk more. Some of elephants use their left tusk more. And do you remember the sound that an elephant makes? I'm going to try and make that sound. Okay, here we go. How did I do? Did I make a good elephant noise? I think it was kind of good. All right, let's keep reading. If you had elephant tusks as your front teeth, they would be super strong. You could easily lift up and move your bed or even the family car. So you're telling me that if you had elephant tusks, you would be so strong that you can even lift up a car? That's really, really strong. And no one would bully you, not even tigers. And if you look at the picture, you see that there's a little kid and he's lifting up the car while his dad or while the man, do you see the man? He's helping to change the tire. And so if you look very closely in the background, there's a tiger in the background. But guess what? If you had huge elephant tusks, even tigers, they would not want to me mess with you. So let's keep on reading. Rattlesnakes. A rattlesnake's front teeth are called fangs. They're shaped like hooks and the tips are like needles. Wow, needles are really sharp. They fold up like a pocket knife when the snake closes its mouth and snap forward when it, when it opens wide. So a snake's front teeth are called fangs. And when his mouth or mouth, when snakes' mouths are closed, they fold up like this. But then when they open their mouth, they the, their fangs fold out like this, and their and the tips are like needles. They're really sharp. So remember, their fangs a snake's fangs fold in like this, and when they open their mouth, their teeth fold out like that. Cool. Let's see what else we can learn. Here's a fun fact. When folded back, a rattlesnake's fangs slide inside fleshy covers that that way the needle tips don't nick the inside of the snake's mouth. So because the snake's teeth are super duper sharp, when they fold them inside their mouth, they go into a fleshy little pouch. It's like a little pocket and it protects their mouth so that their fangs don't accidentally poke them in their mouth. If you had rattlesnake fangs, your front teeth would inject deadly venom. Whoa. So your teeth would be all you'd need to fight enemies or to catch food to eat. And look, here's a little kid with fangs. Do you see them? And look, everybody in the background, they look scared. I have a question. Do children really have fangs for teeth? No, this story is a fantasy and a fiction and a nonfiction story. So this is kind of like science fiction, fantasy, nonfiction. That's kind of confusing. But this story is packed full of real facts, true things about animals. Let's keep reading. Naked mole rat, 
Ew! A naked mole rat's front teeth are shaped like shovels and are in the front of their lips. Wow, they're perfect for digging the family's tunnels without getting a mouthful of dirt. So, a Norwal, I mean, not a Norwal, a naked mole rat has these two big front teeth that helps them to dig tunnels. Let's read the fact. Like beavers, a naked mole rat's front teeth never stop growing. Biting hard roots and bulbs wears the teeth down so they don't get too long. So a naked mole rat, their teeth keep growing, but their teeth never get too long because when they're biting on stuff, it, car, it wears down the teeth. So they, they just never get super duper long. If you had naked mole rat front teeth, you could move each tooth separately so you could move your front teeth like this. That would be weird. If you could move your two front teeth like this, that would be weird. To the left and to the right, they'd work just like chopsticks for picking up food bite by bite. And look, there's a little girl and she has naked mole rat teeth and she's using them like chopsticks to pick up noodles. Do you like noodles? I love noodles. Maybe I'll have noodles for dinner. Cool. Let's keep reading. I really like this story because it has lots of fun facts that can teach us a lot about animals and their teeth. Vampire bat. Ooh, that sounds a little scary. A vampire's bat front teeth are triangle shaped and sharp as razors. They're perfect for scooping out a bit of an animal's skin so they can lap up the blood that flows into the wound. Ew! These vampire bats are like real vampires. Baby vampire bats have teeth, but for the first four months, they aren't strong enough to fly and hunt. So they nurse and they eat vampire bat baby food. Vampire bat baby food, which is blood their mothers bring up from their stomachs. Ew! These little vampire bats are kind of gross, but they also look kind of cool. If you had vampire bat front teeth, you wouldn't have to worry about, uh, about chipping since th they'd uh, lack a hard enamel coat. Um, the edges would wear away easily and always stay sharp. Oh, so vampire bat's teeth always stay sharp. And look at this little girl. It looks like she's tearing uh, wrapping paper to put around a present. They look kind of funny, right? I like stories that can teach you cool stuff. Hippopotamus. A hippopotamus front teeth are long, strong pegs with very sharp edges. Whoa. They're powerful weapons, so opening wide to show them off helps hippos scare away their enemies and the males to win a mate. So, hippos, they have huge, strong, sharp teeth. Because a hippo's teeth don't yellow over time, uh, in the past, wait, because a hippo's teeth don't yellow over time in the past, they were made into dentures. So some people used to eat with hippo teeth. What? People used to use hippo teeth. Humans would use hippo teeth and keep them in their mouth, including the first U.S. president, George Washington. George Washington, the first president of the United States, he had fake teeth that were made from hippo teeth. I had no idea that was true. Wow. 
So this is a cool story that can teach you lots of fun facts. If you had hippopotamus front teeth, you'd never need to brush. Your upper teeth would grind against your lower ones, keeping them clean and white. Wow. So look, this little girl has hippo teeth. And look what she's doing. She's throwing away her toothbrush and her toothpaste because she doesn't have to use it because hippo teeth, they help stay clean by grinding them together. Would you like hippo teeth so that you never have to brush your teeth again? Mm, I like brushing my teeth. I hope you brush your teeth every single day to keep them nice and clean and healthy. Bengal tiger. A Bengal tiger's front teeth are a biting six pack, four sharp pegs edged with twin pointed cones set between its giant dagger like canines. Wow. They're perfect for scraping feathers off birds and meat off bones. Whoa. So it looks like these teeth are perfect for ripping meat off of bones. That is scary. A mother tiger uses her front teeth to bite very gently as she picks up and moves her cubs. So cats will sometimes get their uh, cubs and bite them around the neck, but gently, not hard, because they don't want to hurt their cubs, their babies, but they will just pick them up and carry them like that. If you had Bengal tiger front teeth, they'd be strongly anchored to your jaw. You could bite and hold tight while dragging something as heavy as five times your weight. Whoa, so look at this kid. He's biting onto a rope and he's pulling a little girl and luggage. And it looked like he's pulling it fast because a bingo is so strong, if they bite onto something, they can pull it because their, their teeth and their mouth and their face is just really, really strong. And so look at that kid. Would you like teeth like that? <laughs> that might be a little scary. Crocodile. A crocodile's front teeth are all shaped, oh no, are all shaped like cones and have sharp tips. They bite well, but come out easily and new ones grow out, grow in very slowly. So a crocodile does not want to lose any of his teeth because it takes a really, 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 really long time for new teeth to grow in. So a crocodile's front teeth are always changing and are often different sizes. So when a new tooth starts growing in, it grows in really slowly. So a crocodile's teeth may always look a little different. Here's a fact. A fact is just something that's true. Crocodiles can't clean their own teeth. They open their mouths for small birds called plovers to pick leftover food off their teeth. So crocodiles use birds to help clean their teeth? Did you know that? I had no idea. So instead of using a toothbrush, crocodiles just use birds named plovers. Cool. If you had crocodile front teeth, your teeth would stick out when you closed your mouth. You wouldn't need to open wide when you went to the dentist or uh, gave a toothy grin. So look, this little boy has crocodile teeth. And look, you can see all of his teeth even while his mouth is, while his mouth is closed. And look at this crocodile. When he closes his mouth, you'll still be able to see his teeth. Wow. Can you imagine going to the dentist and you never even have to open your mouth? That would be kind of cool. We're almost to the end of the story. The next animal is a camel. A young camel's front teeth are long, strong, and have very sharp edges. 
They're just right for nipping off tough, thorny desert plants. So a camel teeth are used for when they're eating desert plants that are tough. So the edges are sharp to help them to be able to eat tough plants. Baby camel's front teeth erupt through their gums by the time they're 14 days old. 14 days old? So when a camel is 14 days old, their teeth already are coming up. Like you, camels have two sets of teeth. Camels get their adult front teeth when they're about five years old. So they start with baby teeth, and then when they're about five years old, their adult teeth grow in. Cool. If you had camel front teeth and ate tough stuff eight hours a day, as camels do, by the time you were a grown-up, your front teeth would be no, no more than stubs. Oh, man. So because camels, if by the time they get really old, I guess their teeth wear down because they don't get new teeth. Just like humans, they get baby teeth and then their adult teeth grow in and they don't get any more teeth. And look, here's a little girl eating pineapple with her camel teeth. <laughs> it looks kind of funny. Some of these pictures are kind of silly, but they're uh, really cool because they teach you stuff. Animal teeth could be cool for a while, but you don't use your front teeth to cut down trees or scare off enemies. You don't need them to dig tunnels or to bite really tough stuff. And you never lift the family car with your teeth. No, a family car is way too heavy, even for fun. So what kind of front teeth are right for you? Hmm. Well, they're human teeth. And look, here are all the little kids from the story with their human teeth. <laughs> Luckily, you don't have to choose. The teeth that replace those you lost will be people teeth. They'll be what you need to bite apples, carrots, and corn on the cob. Just what you need to help you talk. And best of all, to show off your smile. So, when you lose a tooth, you don't get animal teeth. You get people teeth or human teeth. And it helps you to eat stuff and to show off your smile. Where do teeth come from? Adult teeth start growing inside your jawbone soon after you're born, even while your baby teeth are getting ready to push through your gums. So even when you're born, you have adult teeth that are waiting in your jawline. Whoa, I didn't even know that. Any new growing teeth are called tooth buds. So if you have a tooth uh, or, or that's starting to, to, to come up through your gums, that's called tooth buds. The crown or top of the tooth forms first. Then the roots grow and push the tooth out. When this happens with an adult tooth, it makes the baby tooth roots break down. Next, wow, this is a lot of new information I didn't even know. Next, the baby tooth gets loose and falls out. Then the permanent adult tooth moves into this space. Wow, we just learned all of this new information about how your teeth grow in. And it even has some information about how to take care of your teeth. Besides two front teeth, you'll get 30 more permanent teeth, but you only get one set and they must last your whole life. So brush at least at both morning and night and floss between teeth regularly. Avoid fizzy drinks and sugary foods. So you're not supposed to eat candy every day. Um, those help bacteria grow. Then bacteria attacks teeth and causes tooth decay. So if you eat too much sugary food or drinks, it will cause tooth decay and it will hurt your teeth. Dentists and doctors have found 
there is a strong connection between having healthy teeth and a healthy body. So taking good care of your teeth can help you grow up feeling like you have something to smile about. Plus, you'll have a beautiful smile that lasts a lifetime. Well, guess what? That is the end of today's story. Today we read, what if you had animals' teeth? And we learned all these cool facts about animals and their teeth and what it would be like if you had animal teeth. Thank you so much for watching Barbershop Book Storytime. If you would like to learn more information about Barbershop Books or to donate, you can visit our website, barbershopbooks.org. If you would like to connect with us on social media, all you have to do is search at Barbershop Books. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for Barbershop Book Storytime. Until next time, bye.